tassels and things like that. Because they're very nice in the summer when all the flowers are uh, in bloom and the trees and all that. Very nice walks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> open, the, open the wind up to maximum. Then the mosquitoes. There's no mosquitoes. This is in Malaysia. We talked about. Really? There's no mosquitoes. I've never seen a mosquito in my life. There are spiders. Ah, yeah, they wouldn't hurt you. I remember in Galway there were bees. Ah, bees, ah. Bees? Yeah, bees. Bees? Make honey. Oh, bees. I thought bees. Instead of flies. I've gotten stung by a bee twice. It's. It hurts for uh, a minute or two, but it's not so bad. Well, at last! What's going on? I don't know what's going on. I tell the students now I don't know what to do, uh, because I don't really want to do a full lesson with half the class here. So I suggested we'll take a casual, easy lesson, and we'll look a little bit at the next topic. Yes? But we won't we won't stress ourselves too much. You don't look like you're in a stressed mood. Uh, do you have class after this one? Yeah. If you don't, do we do the story of the class. Wong, you got the email saying. Yeah. Did we? Well, well, just follow the timetable from here now. Without getting anything. What the hell? What lesson are we on? We're, we were in the middle yeah. of ideal gas law. Yes. Do you want me to send the time to the group? It's too late now. Yeah. It's too late now. I would just send the one here. No, but I didn't see that. Uh, we opened the... <laughs> Come on, there we go. Sit down. No, but, but we did all this in the room. Sit down. <laughs> Uh, where did we stop? Let's see. We got um, we got some of this done, didn't we? Oh yes, we stopped at uh, Kelvin, wasn't it? Well, since we only have half a lesson to do, we might actually get it finished because we're in the middle here. Do we need to get our books out? Yes. 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 Fine. Yes. Is he back? Yeah. No, is he back? Did you see him? No. I didn't think he was coming back until... I saw him this morning, I think. You think? He was dreaming, I think. Yeah, maybe we were dreaming. Or maybe, maybe Irish people all look the same yeah. too. Maybe he turns on. Yeah. No, no, no. His wife is having a kid. That's why he's out. Yeah. Is it not, isn't his wife here in Ireland? Yes. Okay, she's having the kid, why is he? <laughs> 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 He's happy. When you become a husband, you'll know. Yes. Yeah. No, but like, that's a lot of time for the husband to take uh, me. This is the worst. <laughs> uh, did you know what it's called when the husband takes time off like this? Uh, Very good. Eternal leave, yes. That's and the mother? Yeah. The mother, see you. No, oh, yeah, but it's a different, different word too. Maternal. Yeah, great. Alright. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's the mother? It's like two months. And then that's all. Two weeks. No, nothing. Oh, back home. Yeah. Yeah, but there's probably lots of cheap labour to help out the mother, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's not much cheap labour here. Yeah. So this is part of the reason. But the husband forms the cheap labour here. The free, the free, uh, free labour, yes, not cheap labour, free labour. Uh, okay, um, so how do we count in physics is where we're continuing. Uh, one. So um, when we count, we do use an in, uh, a unit in physics. Uh, what I mean is, for example, uh, well, this, I'm giving some examples. So for imagine we have some water. Uh, we do not say, for example, we have 10 to the 23 molecules of H2O. We use a unit to count. For example, uh, bakers count in 13s. So a baker counts in 13s. Um, dozens? Dozens. Bakers dozens. So if a baker... Not for a baker, it's 13. What? Yes. Uh, so bakers count in 13s. Bakers dozens is 13. 
uh, 10 baker's dozens is 130. Uh, in physics, we will count molecules in units larger than 13, because 13 is quite a small unit. So what do we count in? Well, you might think, well, maybe we should count in billions. How many billions? Or how many millions? Yeah, PPM. Hmm? PPM. Or, yeah, PPM parts per million, yeah. Uh, but, in fact, we use something called Avogadro's constant, which maybe you've done in chemistry. And this is the name of the unit we count in. We count in a unit called moles. So a mole of something, like a m uh, molecules, cups of coffee, stars, etc., whatever you have, that is one Avogadro's constant of that something. And one Avogadro's constant is Na, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So this is the definition you need, please. Do you want to write something down? We have the definition of chemistry on the board. Ah, that's my note. Yeah, look, if Faisal's writing this down, you're not going to be upstaged by Faisal, are you? I mean, look at the cap he's wearing, come on. You didn't feel it colder than yours. I do like the cap, actually. It's a very Irish cap, though. Where did you get it? My grandfather. Yeah! <laughs> Trick shop. Yeah, it was like this was back in Amman. It was like you're going there. This is what they were there to keep them warm. Have you like, no, but it's no, you keep it. You need it. Yeah. Like you know, I want you to have and do it at this price. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and tell me this: the only other person I've seen wearing this cap is the biology teacher. So it's not that popular, but people do wear it here. It's more of a country cap, not a city cap. Yeah, I'm getting my city cap, it's getting shipped. Really? <laughs> I feel like Goku and then this. Oh yeah? <laughs> you get an NY cap maybe? No, I don't like that. Alright, do you Two have this? Mainstream. No. Huh? Too mainstream. Too mainstream, true. How true. many times do you see someone wearing I feel like Goku cap? No, that's true actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hipster Faisal. Are you going to get the big glasses as well? There was one, one student who had a very 1980s style of clothes. They had the sort of 19... Yes, now we're talking. Uh, they had the 1980s uh, sneakers. Yeah. Uh, with grey duct tape around it, you know? And uh, oh, just everything, so 1980s. Uh, okay. So if I have one mole of H2O, then how much H2O do I have? Uh, or if I have one mole of cups of coffee, or if I have one mole of stars, then I have that many molecules of H2O, that many cups of coffee, that many stars. Get the idea? I would hope so, since you did this in chemistry. Right, now molar mass. Imagine I do have one mole of cups of coffee. That's a lot of coffee, right? Uh, what would the mass be? Let's calculate. So I want you to calculate this for me. Um, how much would the mass of a cup of uh, what's the mass of a, a cup of coffee roughly? Four hundred, five hundred grams. Will we say? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just yeah, yeah. What will we say? Four hundred grams. We'll say. Um, and we have a mole of coffee, uh, coffee cups. So I want you to calculate the molar mass. That is the mass of one mole of uh, coffee cups. Uh, and we'll estimate it at 400 grams a coffee cup. You have yeah. one mole of coffee, yeah. which is a lot of coffee, because a mole is a big number. Zero point four. Yeah, but that's a lot of the number. Yeah. But if you you're here, you're multiplying the number of moles not the number of particles. No, no. You see, you're thinking about this too much. Too much. Yeah. In physics, so far, all I've told you that a mole is a big number, right? So if I asked you, what's the mass of ten cups of coffee? 
what would you do? You take the mass of one cup and you multiply it by. If I ask for a dozen cups of coffee, twelve. Twelve. The baker's dozen. A mole. Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 So you consider a cup of coffee as a product? No. You see, this is what you need to fix in your head. I never said a mole is only for counting well, particles. I very clearly said you can use it to count stars, cups of coffee, oh, molecules. Thinking about the chemistry. Exactly. What's the answer? Uh, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 times 400. Which is... Oh, and it's 0 0.400 as well. Uh, Taking way too long. Uh, times 10 to the 23, correct? Yes. So this is the molar mass of coffee. This is the mass of one mole of coffee. Yes. 2.4 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. Yes. Yes. Uh, continue. You need kilograms. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with your brain today? Yeah, so is this is this. <laughs> it's a so well, yeah, because coffee is big. Because coffee is a lot bigger than an oxygen atom. We weren't prepared for this lesson. Let's see. Sorry. Like, that's we said 400 grams. A cup of coffee is 400 grams. It should stay so 1 gram gram of cup of, of coffee. Six point zero two to the power 23 times the mass oh. of one cup, which is 0 0.4 kilograms. Uh, why is this confusing? What, what, you must be thinking about moles in some way which is yeah, not acceptable. No, but what do you think a mole is? The no, mass of the mole is what they're thinking. Now, is that what I said it was? One I micro. know, but that's the way we, we were... And anyways, a, 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 a mole is not the number of particles in an object. You count the number of particles in an object using moles. Because the number of particles in an object is yeah. so big, yeah. you count in a big unit, which is a mole. But a mole is just a number, a number of things. It could be anything. It's usually particles, because particles are a big number. It's not usually cups of coffee. Because yeah. it's easy to count two cups of coffee. You just go one, two. But it's not easy to count particles in an, an object. Yeah. Yeah. Please say that. Tell Stephen I love him, but I can't be there. Uh, tell him, uh, you can reply saying, um, it'll be difficult without you, but I'll be strong. <laughs> Who's that? Lee. Yeah. Um, okay, Yusuf, is this okay now? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. This is okay for you. And Omar? Yeah. yeah, okay. Can we continue? So, this is called the molar mass. So the definition is the molar mass of a material is the mass of one mole of it. That's all. Although, please note, it is common to give this in grams. We will stick to kilograms in physics, but in chemistry you may use grams. Uh, but we switch between the two. Okay? Uh, so can you write down the molar mass definition? And the molar mass definition is almost exactly identical to the name. Molar mass is the mass of a mole. Yeah? It's like saying the dozen mass is the mass of a dozen. What was your first class that wrecked your brain so much today? Nothing. Oh, 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 oh we're, we're warming up as it's we're getting started. Well, just. Well, it's about at nine, but apparently that person was cancelled. Uh, so you were coming before nine coming here. Did I? They you said that your cancer was. I'm not receiving any emails from Cleo. Two days ago, when she didn't know that the ESAP was cancelled and we had come to you and then yeah, she sent the email. No, she sent the email. Yesterday. Yesterday she sent the email. And she said, come to us. So just follow that. Yeah, but I didn't know what the email was. Just, they didn't get it. Well, how can we get it? I know I'm in the group. Yeah, you have the timetable. It's inside of you. You don't get the timetable. You're being the timetable. So only two out of our class. Yeah. It's proven. Which two? Those two. Those two. You and you. Yeah. Yeah, well these are the key people because they can spread the information. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, so we're supposed to have chemistry, but then she cancelled it. But why did he come at her? Yeah. Because they can't be the ASAP cancellation email. It was coming to the history. <laughs> True story. Alright. Well, look, life sucks. Uh, continuing. You got this definition? Do you do this definition in chemistry? Seminar. What's your definition in chemistry of molar mass? Mass over volume. Oh. Uh, no. no. Molar mass over. Mass over molar. Times. Yeah, the fact that you have trouble remembering it means it's a bad definition. No, I know it's m, m over mr. Mass okay, over but that, mr. that's much longer. Yeah, but that's, but that's much longer to say than molar mass is the mass of a mole. Yeah. yeah. For example, the molar mass of H2O is 18 grams. So. Uh, yeah, because it's 18. 16 plus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, some important notation, please. We normally let n represent the number of molecules and n the number of moles. Uh, the way you can remember this is that big N is bigger than small n, so big N represents a bigger number than small n. Uh, and as a formula we can relate the big N and the small n with Avogadro. So if we take um, the number of molecules or numbers of cups of coffee or number of whatever is equal to the molar number, the, the number of moles, times Avogadro's constant. Logically, that's obvious. Um, and again, you probably did this in chemistry. Yeah, but this formula has lots of n, so it's kind of confusing. Okay. Hint to remember, big N is bigger than small n. I'm keeping it all simple for you, yeah? Okay. Right, here is a small question. Uh, which is kind of a chemistry revision question which should not take you long to do. Um, I have one liter of water at room temperature and the molar mass of H2O is 18 point so on grams per mole. Question one, how many moles of water uh, H2O molecules are in one liter? Okay, so I'll give you 30 seconds to do this. Uh, it should even take less than 30 seconds. Take out the calculators and go. Can we convert liters to kilograms? In fact, you must do this. Yeah, liters to kilograms? Liters, yeah. What? Yeah, well, I know what he means. He wants. What is, what is the mass of a liter of water? Yeah. But you can't convert liters to kilograms. No, you can't. He used the wrong verb. Give him a break, alright? How many kilograms are there in a liter? Or yeah. Or Take it, yeah. <coughs> oh, cute. <laughs> Give me the answer here. Come How on. many? I, I wanted, I you should one. know this. A thousand? <laughs> think, about, think about this. <laughs> it, <laughs> would you say one liter of water <laughs> is a thousand <laughs> kilograms? Is it one point one kilogram? I don't know. Thank you. One liter is one kilogram. Ooh. You're like, oh yeah, I knew that. Yeah. So how many grams are in a litre of water? Why grams now? Because we're using grams for the mass. We just use kilograms. You think, doesn't it? No, no, no. Don't be stupid, please. How many grams of water is there in a litre of water? Just answer that. Don't think anything else. What? One. There's one gram. A thousand, a thousand. Thank you. Are we on the kilograms? I know, I know I want grams. <laughs> Yeah, so are we all happy that there's 1,000 grams of water in a litre of water? Yeah, and how many grams are in a mole? 18. So how many moles are in a litre of water? Uh, just calculate this. That is 55.5 moles. Okay? Right. How many molecules? What do I do next? 55.5 times Avogadro, which is 10 to the 23. This number. That's how many molecules of H2O are in a litre of water. Now, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Next part. How many oxygen atoms are in a litre of water? So, what's the biggest answer? This. Six, nine, three, four, one. 
That is incorrect. Ah, the same number. Sorry. The same number. Same as this. And then the edge you multiply it by two. Yes. Well, think about this. Imagine a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee is on a saucer. And uh, it has, let's say, it has two sugar cubes with it, for example. If I have a mole of cups of coffee, how many saucers do I have? A mole. A mole. Because there's a saucer per cup. And how many sugar cubes do I have? Two moles, because each cup has two moles. It's the same here with the H2O. I have a mole of H2O. Each H2O has an O and two H's. So I have this many O's and then this many H's. So it's not like percentage? No. It's not like the other numbers, the whole thing. And then you calculate the number of oxygen atoms and then take that out from the total number. No, no, you just, the number we got a moment ago is how many H2O's you have, and each, each H2O is two H's and an O. So if you have 55 moles of H2O, then you're saying you have 55 moles of O and 55 moles of H2. Or in other words, 110 moles of H and 55 of O. Yes? I would have taught from the chemistry this would be super duper easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I can tell I'm not good at chemistry. It's also the first lesson, don't judge. Okay, no judging. No judging in this world. Right, can we continue? We're okay with the basics. Right, now. Mm. <laughs> Let us return to Boyle's Law. It won't surprise you to know that there are other relationships. Uh, so, we have pressure is inversely proportional to volume. You increase the volume, you decrease the pressure. You decrease the volume, you increase the pressure. When everything else is constant. But pressure is also proportional to temperature. You heat it up, you increase the pressure. Again, logical from our experience. Volume is proportional to M. So if you double the number of atoms, then it's not a surprise that you double the volume. Right? Uh, or N. Pressure is proportional to N as well, because if you, if you double the a number of atoms, you double the pressure. And this makes sense, especially when you think about the proof I did of the kinetic theory. Remember we said the pressure was caused by what? The mm. momentum, yeah. The momentum of the particle hitting the wall. So by doubling the number of particles, we have doubled the number of impacts, and so have doubled the pressure. And volume is also proportional to temperature. You increase the temperature and it expands. There are exceptions, of course. So it seems like these are all coming from one formula. And they are all coming from one formula. And by looking at the proportional relationships, it's not a difficult proof, but it's not on the course. We can prove um, one formula for all these proportional relationships. Yes. Is it N equals... No. PV equals NRT. If we use moles, and R is a constant for the formula, and this is a constant which I believe you know. What's it called? It's called the ideal gas law constant. Uh, Eight point three one. Eight point three one. Yeah. Oh, and G. What is the problem? This is a great topic. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's but it's so easy. Okay, why do we do it twice? Once in physics. No, I tell you, I tell you, because you did this in chemistry for the first semester. Now we're doing this for physics. Oh, they're revising. And anyway, this is better for you because it's one less thing to learn. Because if we didn't do this, we'd have to do something else. Yeah. And your brain has a limited capacity. Yeah. Learning is from Mr. Stevens. Yeah. Uh, 
that's true. And we all know that is the main reason. Uh, okay, so you have PV equals MRT, where R is the constant 8.31. But that's if you use N moles. If you use N particles, you have PV equals NKT, uh, where K is a constant, a different constant. Now, you might be uh, thinking about this a bit more, but we will look at this in a bit more detail. But first, let's just get the units for the R. Okay? And we'll do this together as a small exercise. So you have... Um, what about the square? Oh, relax. PV equals N... No. N or T. So R, the constant, is PV uh, over NT. Now, the unit for uh, pressure is uh, newtons per meter squared. For volume is meters cubed. For N is moles. And for T is Kelvin or Celsius. We'll use Kelvin here. Uh, so we'll end up with Nm mole minus 1K minus 1. But what's Nm? No? Oh. Newton by meter, force by distance. Joules. Joules. So the constant is joules per mole per Kelvin, is the unit for R. So it's actually 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin, or joules per Kelvin mole. Yes? Is okay? Uh, did you do the units in chemistry? We just got my right there. It was uh, joules per mole. Uh, uh, two small uh, per degree Celsius, not Kelvin. That's yeah, well, we can use Celsius too. Uh, right. Now, uh, by dividing, we can actually see that the same formulas are just different constants. We call R for ideal gas law, and K is called the Boltzmann's constant. They're really the same thing with just different units. So, how can it be the same thing? Well, you have PV equals N or T, or PV equals N. KT. But remember a moment ago I said N equals N and A. Yes. If I put that in here, I get this is equal to N N A K T. So that's equal to um, N A K over N What am I doing? Hang on, don't confuse me. I can do this. I can do this. Right, we start off with this formula. And we know that N equals N and A. And I'm going to put that into this here by just saying N is equal to N over N A. So this is PV is equal to N over N A or T, which is equal to N or over N A T. And if we just call this K, we get NKT. So literally the Boltzmann's constant is the same as the ideal gas law constant, except divided by Avogadro's number. And you might be thinking, well, where does Boltzmann get this constant named after him if he just took this and divided by Avogadro's? Now, it does come up in other areas uh, as an important constant. But I always wonder, what's the point in having two formulas with two different constants, when really they're the same thing with just different units. You just simply change the n moles into particle numbers. So uh, why do we need two constants? After all, if PV equals nRT, then we can rearrange it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why there's two formulas. You'd have to ask a chemistry teacher. Uh, but we can clearly see, which I've just done here, that it really is the same formula with just different units. When we're using this, the R is 8.31, as you know. And when we're using Boltzmann, uh, we get this. And you know that, of course, the mole unit has disappeared from the constant. Why? We divided, we divided out the, yeah, the mole. Uh, so you will need to note these two constants, please. Mm, we multiplied, we didn't divide, but if we divide by a negative, we get the... I don't know what we did because I'm hungry. Okay. Yeah. But I did it anyways. 
Oh, it's almost one. Are we done? <laughs> 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 There's still five minutes left. But that clock is correct. I believe it's five minutes late. He has to look at it. Five minutes late. He doesn't know. Five minutes late. He doesn't know. Continue? No. Use your friendly voice. We wasted an hour of physics. We could have done way more if the whole class was here. No. But this way we get to enjoy each other's company. We still have three more hours. They want to be asking for an hour. Ah, but that's for labs. That's different. Yeah, but I have. I think what I'll do is I'll change that math. It depends. Um, it depends if you are finished the labs by four o'clock or not. It might become part of the lab class. Uh, it depends how slow or fast you work. Oh yeah, I need to figure out. Maybe in a distance. No, no, we'll take the room. We'll just kick whoever's out. We'll get the same one. Okay, good. Continue. Finally, note that now this is critical. We always use Kelvin in these formulas. Never use Celsius for the temperature, or you will fail. Okay. You have been warned. Yes. Yes, you have been warned. Right, here are the molar masses for some materials. Um, molar mass and then the molar structure. So liquid water, we have it as 18, and it's two hydrogen and an oxygen. Carbon dioxide is 44, one carbon and two oxygen. Uh, hydrogen uh, is this with two H's, helium is this, and oxygen is this, nitrogen is this. You will need these values for the worksheet, so can you note them please? We can work the notes from the periodic table. No, because the periodic table is not as accurate as this, correct? It's only like one decimal point. Is it even one decimal point? No. No. So so most of the only one that they don't. Yeah. Got that table by so good. Uh, note the structure is important because, for example, when you calculate the mole of ni nitrogen, for example, um, and I said how many nitrogen atoms there are, because nitrogen occurs in pairs, uh, you have to double your answer. Uh, it's something you probably talked about in chemistry. And they ask for atoms, not molecules. Yes, exactly, exactly. So take care of that. Um, there are seven atoms that occur in pairs. Um, the common ones for physics are the ones I have here. Uh, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, and then the, the one that doesn't occur in a pair is uh, helium. Uh, and water and carbon dioxide. This table, I put it together because these represent what you usually get in the exam. You don't need to know the structure because they should should tell you it in the question because you do not have access to a periodic table or other information like this. But just in case they don't, I included it here. All right, do you have this? Yep. Right. Now, uh, what we have here is one question. 
And then some questions here. What's the TV? Standard temperature question. What's the ATM? Oh, Why are you asking me questions and answering them, Faisal? <laughs> oh, because you like to ask questions and answer them. No, the question was what is the ATM? Wouldn't you say it's a little bit annoying to ask a question and to answer it? Because I would say it's a little bit annoying to ask a question and then answer it. Don't you hate when people answer their own questions? Because I really hate when people answer their own questions. <laughs> atmosphere. You did this in the last lesson. Remember, an atmosphere of pressure. Not automatic teller machine at the bank. <laughs> Is it the same? No. Is the ATM the same value at the bank as it is here? ATM and... Yeah, ATM. One atmosphere of pressure. What I gave you in the last class. So ATM is the same as STP? No. Uh, I say in the question, I think, what STP is. It's... Uh, where, where did I mention? Uh, standard temperature and pressure is zero Celsius and one atmosphere. So in physics, when we say something's at STP in the exam, we are saying that its temperature is zero. I know, I know. I didn't pick this. So don't, don't, don't take the player, hit the game. Um, I yeah, no, not, not. Now the unfortunate thing is there are many definitions of standard temperature and pressure. So in fact, it's not really right to say standard temperature and pressure because there's nothing standard about it. Um, because some places use room temperature yeah. as 20. Maybe this is what you use in chemistry. Well, I say we use room temperature as 25. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because we lived in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <It's 20. laughs> there's nothing standard about standard temperature and pressure. But for physics, it's zero Celsius and an atmosphere of uh, uh, pressure. Now, we don't have time to do this question, so, unfortunately. so what will happen in the next class, I think what we'll do is we'll make it kind of a tutorial. I will do this as an example, and then we'll work on this in turns together. Um, and it should be pretty quick, because you did it in chemistry, <laughs> but we shall see. No, no, that's true. You always keep me uh, on my toes and uh, in